Hello friends, it's me Genuine Coder. This is the fifth chapter in the Java multi-threading video tutorial series and in the last chapter we talked about creating threads by extending the Java thread class. In this chapter we will talk about thread priorities. So before we talked about the threads running in our operating system, for example in my system there is like 3002 threads currently active so when this much thread is running and there is only a limited number of cores available the processor will do allocation for each thread for example like for 100 nanoseconds it will execute one thread and in the next 100 nanosecond it will execute the next like that so uh, the thread uh, the CPU cores will be given to these threads. So in our example, when there are more than one thread and we want to give more resource to, resources to a special thread and give less resources compared to the first one to another thread like that. In those kind of scenarios, thread priority is very, very important. So using set thread priority, you can assign a priority for a thread which will impact how much CPU time it will get. So that is the basic idea of priority. So the more the priority, the more the CPU cycles it will get. Okay. So let us start working on that example. So I'm going to start with another example. So uh, the code will be available under, under chapter five in GitHub. I will upload this to the, I will commit this to the GitHub and push it. So for now, let us create one runnable class. So calculator, runnable. I'm going to create a runnable class. So what I'm trying to do is, it is similar to the chapter two code. In chapter two, we will enter some number here and we will calculate from zero to that number as a sum. So similarly, a similar kind of task will be uh, uh, created. And so let us program that one. So implements runnable. So it, we, we have to implement the run method since we are implementing the runnable and the thread will be executing this method as a different thread. So long sum equals zero. Then I have to calculate sum from one to that number let us make this long okay then sum plus equals i so we'll get now we need to set this limit so in order to set that result we have to receive a value so i mean for this thread i am passing a variable to this thread uh, you will understand this once the code is complete it is going to be very simple so so we will pass a value when we create this runnable object so let's say we set thousand in the parameter then it will count from zero to thousand so for that we need this value and the sum will contain it now what i want to do is i want to calculate how much time a thread will take to complete this calculation so then we can compare a low priority thread and a high priority thread by checking how much time it will take to complete this operation okay so in order to do that I'm going to create one more variable start time so which will help me to track the amount of time it took to complete the calculation so i will first take the current time millisecond to the start time variable and after completing this summation or addition process i will calculate the time taken by reducing the start time from current time okay so this example is like this when i let's say when i started the process the time was like 1000 then after the process processing the time became 1005 so if i decrease 1005 uh, 1000 from this 1005 i will get the 5 as the time taken so that is the basic idea so here we got the elapsed time in millisecond i just have to print it okay so i am printing it like this s out and here elapsed elapsed time and we print the time taken so now we will get the time 
taken to complete this process and we need to print the name of the thread also because we'll be creating multiple threads so thread dot current thread dot get name okay so far the calculation uh, logic is complete now we have to create a main class to start this application so this is chapter 5 and let me create one another class thread priority okay now of course we need the uh, program starting so here so in order to run this runnable we need a thread so thread th equals new thread then i need the calculator runnable so calculator runnable calculator runnable just runnable, runnable equals new calculator runnable and here i can pass the limit value here which will be taken to the constructor here this value so here i am going to give a big value like this one 3000 no this is a very big value because if i give a small value the cpu will complete it very fast so we won't get an actual difference so if the number is this much big then it will take quite some time and then we can compare the uh, result so I'm going let me create the first thread 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 one equals new thread and I am passing the runnable here okay then I can start the program by setting start by calling start now I have to set the name to differentiate this thread so thread dot set name and let us call this high priority and let's set the thread priority here so the thread priority can be set using this method called set priority okay and we have two extremes for priority and that is defined using this minimum priority which is one in current jdk it may change in future but as of now the minimum priority for a thread is one and the maximum priority for a thread is 10 so you can give a value between 1 and 10 and based on that the cpu scheduling will be done okay so we set the priority to maximum priority which is a high priority and we started the thread so now we have one thread working on this calculation what we want to do is at the same time we need another thread working on the same issue so here i'm going to create another thread called a normal priority thread or let us uh, use minimum priority so maximum priority and minimum priority and we need second thread so thread two thread two thread two so we created first thread with maximum priority thread two with the minimum priority and let us run the program right now shall we okay thread five and the program started it is taking a little bit of time to uh iterate and sum through the, this much big number so let us just wait for a moment and it completed and as you can see here the elapsed time for the high priority thread is 11 seconds and elapsed time for this minimum priority is 11.6 so this is 11.3 and this is 11.6 so using the thread priority we were able to save 300 around 300 milliseconds so in the cpu way it is a very big number uh, for a normal human i mean when you check this like 11.3 seconds and 11.6 seconds it is not a big deal but this is like the billions of cpu cycles that happen between these 300 milliseconds now we have a maximum priority thread and a minimum priority thread let us create one more thread shall we a normal priority thread so here i am going to set it as a normal priority just remember that you don't have to keep constant here you can give like two three four anything is possible i'm just using the predefined con uh, uh, just using the predefined constant so minimum priority is one maximum priority is 10 and normal priority is five when you create a thread by default its priority will be five okay now we have thread three thread three dot set name so three dot set priority and let us start the third thread and it will take around 11 seconds to complete the process and oh uh one second i forgot to give the name so it will be normal priority okay let us run the program again and let us see the cpu and you can see that currently my cpu percentage is 45 percent 
Okay, CPU usage percentage is 45%. Okay, now it is completed. Let us look at the result and you can see that minimum priority took 13.3 seconds to complete and the normal priority took 12.55 and high priority took only 12.54. So it is processing in that normal order. So high priority completed first, normal priority completed next and minimum priority completed the last so that's about the priority i have to tell you about one more extra point about multi-threading i told in the first introduction video that if you use multi-threading you will be able to utilize your processor more efficiently so let us consider this example so let's say uh, you are running just only one thread and if you look at the percentage no matter how much it is uh, Right now at this point it is completely using the CPU and it is only using up to 16.5 percentage of the available CPU because that is a maximum that you can do with one thread But if you go on with creating more threads that do more work then more and more CPU can be utilized so if there is only one thread that is running in a program right now effectively there are two one is main thread and this one and if only one thread is doing the maximum work it can do it will be around like 16 percentage in my octa core processor uh, or it will be like 25 percentage in dual core maybe it is 50 percentage like that so if you add more and more processes you can achieve more and more parallelism in your program and you can do things you can get to do more things within a short amount of time so with the three threads and one main thread it is now able to do able to take 41 percentage of the cpu if i keep on increasing this like this so let, let's just take uh, thread x let me create a thread x and thread y so adding these two threads should increase the cpu utilization a bit more so so as you can see now it is using 65 percentage of the cpu so more of my cores will be allocated to this thread so maybe this core is doing one thread this core is doing another thread like that so that is another advantage of multi-threading you get to use more cpu and you can do your tasks more efficiently in that way so as always thank you for watching this video like the video if you like it and see you on the next video